Oh, well, let's let's continue with where we were. We were speaking about Hanukkah, you understand? And now we're going to speak about from the point of view of the Rastafari, the overstanding of Hanukkah. What is Hanukkah? What is Hanukkah all about? You understand? Some call this the festival, the festival of lights. This is the festival of lights. Now, as you said, the first, the first basic level, have your pen and your paper and take good notes and also um, seek to take advantage of the, of the resources, the different resources available at www.lojsociety.org. There, particularly um, the weekly Sabbath readings has been updated, as well as um, the Hebraic Judaic year, which can give you the Kenak or the calculations according to the Western Reckoning for the holy days, and also check the link at our website on holy days. And when you go there, you can find what are the specific holy days, the commanded holy days of the God and Father of the Moshiach. And the teachings of His Majesty will go into how the Moshiach, Yehoshua, how He fulfilled, how He fulfilled these particular holy days, and what the Rastafari revelation of is in this particular prophetic time. So let's deal with Hanukkah. So Hanukkah right here, if we would put it in the, um, the what do you call this? This is not the square Hebrew, but what's called the, the, the rabbinic script. You got the Ha right there. You have the Nu right there. You have the Ka right there. Now you have uh, a He right here. But then one of the first places that we find um, ha nu ka in the scriptures is in uh, Numbers chapter 7. Numbers chapter 7. Now, when we go to this particular word, and we're going to look it up in our, uh, in the Strong's Concordance. Now, the Strong's Concordance, this is now giving us the Hebrew context, but many are familiar with the King James. So, if you go to the King James, let's go to the King James Bible. First of all, what we're looking up now is Hanukkah from the root, and we know that it's the Feast of Dedication. Now, as we have said and, and point out in that particular clip, the recent clip from here in New York and the European Jewish community's observation of Hanukkah in their particular way, mainly the Ashkenazi uh, point of view, largely, they speak about it as... Um, the festival of lights, they understand it's a feast of dedication and goes back to the dedication of the Beta Mekdes or of the holy place or the temple. But we're going to go to the foundation. And I and I as Ethiopian Hebrews and the Rastafari, we need to go down to the foundation, to, to, to the groundation, because one of the particular um, uh, European Jews, he said, uh, he said um, this is a... Uh, time for us to dedicate ourselves to Judaism. No, no, no. You don't love Yahweh no more. It's for us to dedicate or livicate, as I and as Rastafari say, livicate ourselves to the King of Kings, to Yahweh, to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach Adonen. Now, so when we go to look up this word, we, we can look it up on the dedicated under dedicating, but we decided to go to the third dedication, and we find Numbers chapter 7, verses 84 and verse uh, 85. So the first entry for this is under Numbers chapter 7, verses 84 and verse 85. This is, this is a scriptural root. And now when we go there, what we find is not Hanukkah with a hey at the end, but we have Hanu, Hanukkah. We have Hanukkah. If I were to put the letters, this would be more a K-H instead of a C-H. This would be a N, and this would be a K, and this would be a T. Now, the Ashkenazis would, would put this T often as a the, as a the because they're speaking it from their Eurocentric, for us, a mispronunciation. But then they were grafted in. They're that wild olive, that wild olive tree, according to our brother Hawari of Aulos, that were grafted 
in and we as a natural black branches because of disobedience we was broken off this is why you find black folks always saying especially we as African in, in the Americas and the Caribbean, oh, we should be like the Jews. We should stick together like the Jews. and like Because we, we understand who we are in, 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 in spirit, but there's been a lot of um, misdirection and, 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 and disorientation that has gone on over the past 400 plus years. And it's all a part of the curses for the disobedience. But we give thanks to certain brothers and sisters, but mainly some of the leading brethren like um, uh, Reverend uh, William Saunders Crowdy, one of the first African American to make that that link between Judaism, or well, the Bible, the Israelites in the Bible, the Black Hebrews, and us as Black peoples, and to bring it within the churchical or the theological sense. And then we have uh, Rabbi Wentworth Arthur. Wentworth author Matthews, who also took a net in the next step with the commandment keepers of the black Jews of Harlem. Um, we have brothers like uh, uh, Reverend uh, James, uh, um, James uh, Morris uh, Webb, um, who we've spoken on, and also Rabbi Arnold uh, Josiah Ford, Rabbi Paris, and other ones. And there's a good book right here. Let's get this right here so you can... Um, that has a lot of history. Of course, it has the author's opinions, and, and, and no doubt it, it would. Um, this is Yosef Ben Yohanan, but it's a book that we would recommend, along with the Black Jews of Harlem. And we have some other books at our website that you can take advantage of. Some of them you can download, many of them for free, at www.lojsociety.org. You can go to our books and studies. I think it's on the studies page. And just search the site, and you'll find a lot of the freeware and the shareware. And this is also a very good book, so you can at least get a read of this. And it's called We the Black Jews. It's a witness to the, quote, white Jewish race, end quote, myth. So check, please check this out. So that will go into some more of the details that we speak so we can know that we come from, we have our own tradition. We as Ethiopian Hebrews, as elect Rastafari, as so-called black Jews in the Americas and the Caribbean and, 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 and South, uh, South and Central America as well, where there's many brothers who they call Latinos, Hispanics, so forth and so on. Because when we understand the significance and the relevance and the trajectory of Yahweh's prophecy to scatter us among the Goyim, among the nations, and the rise of white supremacy and, and, this, and this new so-called, quote, Jew, you understand this new Jew that has actually taken our, um, taken on our identity, and we're gonna go into that. Some people may call it, oh, that's anti-Semitic, or you're not Jewish, you're African, or you whatever like that. Listen, <laughs> they don't know Judaism. They're still learning themselves. They don't know really this Torah. And if you look at it, it seems they seem very Johnny come lately. But when we go to our Ethiopic root, you understand, and we start to study the Gutas and study the, the, the line of the tribe of Judah and, and the root of that Ethiopian Hebraic culture, we find all of the keys that we need and that prove both who we are and what this way of life really is. So we have to not look at Hanukkah. So when ones would ask, well, are we supposed to or should we celebrate Hanukkah? Yes, yes, we must. But well, we first need to understand what is Hanukkah and get to the root. So we're going to get to the root by getting to this root word right here. Now, this root word, if you were to now go to this verse right here and you find Hanukkah, Hanukkah is from the Strong's 2598. Strong's, the, the, the H25, what's known as the H2598. In this particular reference right there. And it's Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah. And it's from actually the 2596. In other words, this now, because of this, this Tawe, this Tawe or this Tawi, right, the T sound, it's from the 96, the 2596. 
Now, of course, between 96, 97, 98, there's a 25, 97 as well. Now, each of those depends on what Bible study software or whether you're using the book, you know, the Strong's, uh, con the, 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 the Strong's Concordance. It's a, it's a rather big book. Or if you use something like Blue Letter Bible, which we recommended before because you can look up the verse and then you can go into the verse and go into the Word. And a lot of that is already interactive online. But let's first deal with this these two verses. Let's go through these two verses and give these two verses uh, a reading. Let's give them a hearing. Let's, let's allow these two verses, Numbers chapter 7. And we're speaking about the Rastafari illumination, you understand, or the livication of the illumination, what is known as Hanukkah, right? So we can go to verses 84 and 85. It says, this was the dedication of the altar in the day when it was anointed by the princes of Israel, 12 charges of silver, 12 silver bowls, 12 spoons of gold. Verse 85, each charger of silver weighing a bowl, weighing 130 shekels, each bowl 70. All the silver vessels weighed 2,400 shekels after the shekel or the shekel of the mekdes, of the sanctuary. All right, so we're going to pause right here because these are the two verses that we find, find the root of Hanukkah or Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah. And it's 2598 is the first reference for this verse. And this right here, let's just put this here so you can, this will be the root right here. This will be the root. And we're going to put this in the bracket right here. This will be the root, or this is the eta, this is the etymos logos, the true word. This is the root right here. But this is the true word behind Hanukkah, right? Now, what does Hanukkah mean? It says from 25, it says from 2596, it means... Let's write this because, you know, one's going to think we're making this up. It means initiation. It means initiation. It means initiation, right? In the sense, i.e., of consecration. In the idea of consecration. You know where we're going with this, right? And then when they put a colon here, and a hyphen here. What's the next thing they put? They put dedicating. They put dedicating. And then they do something very interesting. Let's see if we can um, replicate it right here. Dedicating. Then there's an open parenthesis and says a hyphen, T I O N, and close parenthesis. So dedicating in the idea of dedication. Dedicating in the idea of dedication. Right now, of course, we as Rastafari would say, "I na na deal, I na na deal is dead." So we're gonna say, "Livication." Right, so live k or livicating, and we're gonna rewrite this, livication, livication. So Hanukkah, which is actually the first, it's actually the first holy. Uh, day. It's not a commanded. It's not one of the seven. Let's understand this. Let's overstand this. It's not one of the seven. And if you need to follow up on what our holy days are, which ones are our holy days, we once again would highly recommend going to our website and go and clicking on uh, Hebraic Judaic Year. You understand? Or the calendar, Hebraic Judaic calendar, so one can understand within this particular 2011 2012 as well as clicking on weekly sabbath readings and get the the newest the updated one which is this particular one here it looks like the old one the cover is basically the same but the content some of the content and we give footnotes where we had to amend um some of the distinctive words for each of the for each of the um, 54, what's known as the Parsha, you know, a Parshiyot, which is Kufal Bamaringa, Kufal Malet, 
Kufl means portion, and Kufloch means the portions. In the Hebrew, it's Parsha, singular portion, and Parshiot, which means portions. So, just so that be, so that that is overstood, when we go to our calendar page. Or, or the holy days, which list the holy days. And in this one, we give some additional parshiot for the holidays, the parshiot. And we explain much of what we've said right here, but at least you'll have this as a reference. And let's just give a kind of an intro to this. It says, below are the additional readings for holidays and special Shabbats, or the special Senbet. Note that on holidays, or really holy days, the Maftir portion, the particular type of uh, synagogue Torah portion, is different than the usual Orit, Torah, Nibab reading. So there's a usual Torah portion for each Senbet or each week, but beginning with the seventh day, Shabbat, that rest day, and then there's that particular reading and feeding, which is a meditation until the next Shabbat or the next Senbet or the next rest day, right? But on the holy days or special Shabbats, there's a different reading that's in tune with the, the subject matter of that holy day or that um, special day, that, 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 that special Shabbat. Now also, um, Hosea 14 and 13, we added this actually from some of our notes and going through it over the last uh, two to three um, years in the cipher and the cycle of uh, Torah portion readings and feedings. We added this into this update. Um, also, Hosea 14 and 13, it reminds us that in Christ and his kingly character, the Moshiach, the Mashiach, even the King of Kings, or the Messianic dispensation, we're in what they call the messianic dispensation. In other words, some are looking for the so-called, quote, return of Christ according to their interpretation. Now, remember, the Jews themselves, 2,000 years ago, and we're more speaking about the black Jews themselves, they had certain ideas of who Christ would be according to what the religious, the, the religious authorities, like what, what the church folk, what the church have said, what the guys who write all these books that say about when Christ returned again and all these so-called um, pseudo and even many counterfeit so-called Christians out there, nominal churchins and Christians and your 700 clubs and Pat Robinson, they put out a lot, of, a lot of speculation based on their understanding, not overstanding exactly the half of the story that wasn't told concerning us as the black Hebrews of Beta Israel. And we're going to go into a teaching on that, y'all willing, something that might be called something to the effect of um, Ethiopia, Eclipse, Hylus Selassie, semicolon, as Israel did Christ, as Israel eclipsed Christ. And was the interest of those who are looking for the redemption of Israel eclipsed focusing on that one who was bringing about the redemption. And in the same sense, did Martin Ethiopia circa 1974-75 in the creeping coup against the Moshiach. But when we understand the Bible in, in correct prophetical and historical interpretation, we would even recognize that the, the um, crucifixion of his majesty or the creeping coup against God's elect, that too is a part of the revelation matrix. That is not outside of what the Almighty already warned his servants of things that must shortly come to pass. But from the nominal Christian perspective, based on um, white Western and Gentile Christianity, which is coming from a, a, a disorientation. You remember the early the Jews and the Christians were Judaic or Hebraic in, in the very root. In fact, they said that Christ fulfilled the Torah. The Torah is known to the Hebrews, and in order to understand what Christ did and who he is, one needs to consult with Torah and prophets and so forth and so on. And this is something that many Nominal Christians ignore and neglect so much so that they put out the New Testament many times about the Old Testament and with no focus on the Old Testament as a basic foundation. 
This is why Christ will say to many of them, when they say, haven't we cast out demons in your name and, and, and did uh, disaster relief funds and so forth and so on in your name, and Adonenu and Gitachin and our master, you understand, the, the real black boss will say, Christ will say, our big brother will say, I never knew you. Get away from me, you lawless. Saying you lawless is saying you are Torahless. You are instructionless. Get away from me. You understand? And he will regard them as, as, as reprobate. So this is very interesting. You could tell your Pat Robinsons and the rest of them that, you know, who go, who go around um, doing what they should not do and not speaking the truth concerning the King of Kings and his Christ. But we say right here that, that Hosea 14 and 13 it reminds us in this messianic dis, uh, dispensation that spiritual prayers and praise are preferred by the Almighty God to the former Old Testament animal and blood sacrifices. So we also put another reference here to the epistle to the Hebrews because it's very, very important to understand the role and relationship of that book known as, that epistle known as Ibrawiyan or Hebrews, because Hebrews, if you look at each of the epistles, we have the epistle to the Romans, Corinthians, the ones in Ephesus and, and Thessalonica and, and the different places where there were church communities, where there were growing communities of, 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 of black Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrew and Gentile communities. But the book, uh, the epistle of Hebrews is, is especially important because this is the one that really speaks to the Hebrews, the Hebrew Christians. And it's important for us as Ethiopian Hebrews to make note of the, the teaching and the instructions that are contained in the book of Hebrews. In fact, we regard in the Society of His Majesty among our fellow um, sister churches that the book of Hebrews is our liturgy if we would understand and receive the book of Hebrews and keep that word in mind liturgy now as we explained here there's a supplemental calendar you understand there's a supplemental calendar for the Hebraic Judaic year that contains the exact lunar reckoning and western dates for the following holy days that has been created and modified for easiest usage by the newcomers by those who are newcomers and beginners and and dekamezamorit, the newcomers, the basic level disciples. The beginning of Torah readings and the new year, the new year, the Adis Ahmet or the Rosh Hashanah, the Ras Hasana, is marked on and after the Simchat Torah, the the Fishha Orit or Yorit Desita, the joy of Jah's law. That's what Simchat Torah means. And the first reading for the current year is charted from that holy day because ones have asked, well, when would we begin? In other words, how do we know we see the 54 Torah portion readings, the Beit, the Mi'raf, the Abiyat, the Parashat, beginning with the Mejameria or Berashit and Yenoch or Noah, um, to later with uh, Lek Leka, Tegelet Let, uh, Vayira, or Wayira, Yesharam, was that a refe? But how do we know where do we begin? You know, how, you know, and that's a good, that's a very good question. Now, when we pay attention to Torah, it shows us when the new month, when the new month comes in. Now, we've been disorientated, especially in captivity. You understand? We've been disorientated, so we're looking at our clocks and watches and so forth and so on, and we really don't understand the heavens because we're not in our own land. See, if we had to farm our own food and grow for ourselves, we would need to understand the heavens. And we're not speaking about so-called horoscopes or so-called uh, astrology in the misconception, but in the true sense of understanding and understanding the heavens, you know, when the new moon, the, the high tide, when the water table rises, and so forth and so on. This is why these instructions are basic to us and to the community that will come out of Babylon and will be able to enter into the promised land with honors and, and into that God-given way of life 
requires a God-given and a God-prepared people. This is why the Torah portion readings and feedings and remembering to keep the senbet, yetek edeset, set apart. Keep that in mind, the word yetek edeset, kedus, holy, liturgy, which in them hark is kedase. Please keep that in mind because it's going to come into perfect alignment with what we're speaking of, Hanukkah, right here, and, and so-called dedication. You understand what's known as dedication, right? We say as a Rastafari, livication, because not dead, like we don't say die yet. Have you died yet? Have you died yet? No, it's a live it, how you live. And this is why there's a Levitical, Levitical laws concerning food, which they're finding out interesting with this holistic technology is right and exact and is right on the mark. And since we just segued into that, Let's just point out this particular book here again. Um, this is uh, Judaism and Vegetarianism, this book by uh, Richard Black or Richard Schwartz. Schwartz, uh, that's the Yiddish way to say nigga or black in that sense. But this is a very good book, which is um, more worthy, truly, when you understand it in its biblical context. This is a really, this is, this is one of those works where we say, that when Yahweh said that even some of the Gentiles who would, who would come over to this way of life would get a name greater or than sons and daughters, in a sense. In other words, there are some Gentiles by their own relationship and integrity to Yahweh's word. That means two Torah, two scriptures. You see, so when we talk about white Jews, we're just laying down who they are. You know what I'm saying? Not following any of these fanatics and crazy and crazy folks out here. Because these are the same ones who are lynching nigger. That's why we don't deal with all of that um, Anglo militancy. You know, that's not, that's not for we. So don't get caught up in that, my brothers and sisters, that fanaticism on that sort of level. But being, being um, just, you understand, and having the ma'at, the balance and the equilibrium, we recognize that there are some of those Europeans and Jews who are truly faithful to the word of Yahweh, of Eloheinu, and many of them who have accepted and received the revelation of his imperial majesty. But at the same time, and even they and we know, there are others, you understand the so-called crypto-Jews and, and, and um, so pseudo-Zionists and who use, this is what the Bible even talks about, who use the cover of, of Judaism as a cloak, and that's what the Bible talks about. I know the blasphemy of those say they are Jews and are not, but the synagogue of Satan. They are opposers and adversaries. But what is the opposer or adversary? To the fulfillment of Yahweh's word and will. So this is a good book, too, because this book helps us as Rastafarians recognize how the Bible, how this holistic and this Aita, we say Aita way of life, can be explained in Torah, in Scripture, in the Bible. In fact, this actually proves, this actually proves that the Rastafari inspiration and revelation was true and exact, except many of our brothers and sisters were forbidden and denied access to schooling, education, couldn't read or write, but yet what they were speaking from their spirit we see in a book like this right here. You see, and this is why we recommend this particular book, Judaism and Vegetarian, but Re Vegetarianism by Richard H. Uh, Schwartz, or, or Schwartz, right? So, moving forward, so it's beginning at Simchat Torah. That was about October 21st, 22nd, 2011. That was the first reading. Now we're up to the, the ninth. The, the, the ninth um, Torah portion reading and uh, feeding, um, yeah, Tekemet uh, or Vayeshev, Vayeshev, and he sat or and he dwelt in the land. But in this present time, as of uh, December, was this 20, 19th, 20th, as of this particular time right now, is the beginning of these uh, eight days for the Hanukkah. The Hanukkah. Now, what is Hanukkah all about? Now, here we have um, the first reading here for Hanukkah. The first reading here for Hanukkah, let's see, uh, 13, 12, uh, 11, 10, 
nine on page nine. The one that hopefully you'll be able to download will have the page numbers. This is a rough, a raw copy um, to, in order to do this particular reasoning right here. Numbers chapter seven. It's actually in the in the very same area. Numbers chapter Numbers chapter seven. We're getting to the to the root word, the Hanukkah. Now we find that the Strong's or the H2598, the H is for Hebrew, New Testament will be the G, the G. They use G for New Testament references, but this is Old Testament to distinguish it. The H2598, we have initiation, we have consecration, we have dedicating or dedication, but the Rastafari upgrade is livicating and livication. Now, but what's at the root of it? Remember, we said the root is the H2596. Now, Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter 7 is the area in, in conventional Judaism that is read, the Torah portion, Maftir, that is read for this particular um, Moedim or this holiday or celebration. And different areas of Numbers chapter 7 is read. Now, this is where, let's bring up, Let's bring up this section right here. If you go to Numbers chapter 7, you should still be here. This was the order of the hosts and the gifts. This is where the gifts of the princes, this is where the gifts of the princes were given. It is a beautiful to observe that though the offerings of the princes were identical, each is separately recorded by the pen of inspiration. Each one of these particular gifts. These were gifts now for Yahweh and for his holy place, for his sacred house. In other words, it was to his work, those gifts that we are giving to his work. Now, in modern Judaism, a lot of other ideas are associated because of, you know, Jewish kids, especially the European Jewish kids, see their European Christian um, um, uh, other kids, you know, not getting, you know, they say them getting gifts and stuff like that, so they wonder what is going on. So a lot of these things have been incorporated. The whole idea of the dreidel and spinning the dreidel for a mazel tov or for good luck, which is the mazel tov, that is a strictly Eurocentric tradition. It has nothing to do with the scriptures. Now, we're not going to get into is it is it harmless? Is it should we do it? Basically, we should not. We should understand it. But the first thing we need to really over learn to do is to do the will of the God and Father, our Black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, Adonenu Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, Getachin Yesus Christos. Now, along in our chart here on page nine, you will notice right here, this section right here has over here John, right? We have John, right? When we go to John chapter nine, what's in John chapter nine that's reverential? You understand? Or that is. Uh, uh, relevant, relevant. It's also reverent because dealing with Yeshua. But when we get to chapter 10, verse 22, but let's go to chapter 9, chapter 9, 1 to 7, and 10, 10 22 is the notes that are given. And if you have the old, um, the old uh, Sabbath house reading, the previous one that we had put up there, you'll find that th these um, readings from Torah and from the Old Testament Torah and from the New Testament, the Burr Hadash or the Hadith Kidan are still the same even in the upgrade. There's just additional information that one needs to um, become acquainted with and understand in, in context of this particular season right here. In fact, more of us, our people, should know about this and practice this. I mean, can there be gift giving for children? Yeah. But some other things that are not, uh, are not based on our Ethiopian, our he Hebrew and Hebraic root, we should be cautious about. Some of them, if it's technological or certain other things, can be appropriate. But we really need to weigh and balance certain things. So when people come to us, well, what about the dreidel? You don't spend the dreidel. You're not really Jewish. That's garbage. You know, that's, 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 that's from your European tradition. You know, cause we, we could ask you, do you eat in Jera? And you'd be like, oh, if you don't know what's in Jela, oh, well, you're not really a Hebrew. You're not Jewish, you know, and that's a level right there. But when we go to chapter 9, verses 1, we have verse 1 to um, verse 7 that's referenced for the first day of Hanukkah. Now, are we satisfied with this, that Hanukkah basically means initiation, consecration? 
Are we satisfied with this? What's interesting, Bamarinya, that verse, verse 48, it reads, Shawiyao, Betek Eba Ken, Ye Israel, Alek Ocha Le Mekedeshao, Yakarabuta Kurbana Yihinebre. Then it speaks about the Ashara who let Yabura Wichitoch, Ashara who let Yabura Dissitoch, Ashara who let Yawurk Chilla Fawoch. So here it says, This was the dedication of the altar. Meshawiyao uh, Yetekeba Ken. In other words, this was the, there was the anointing, the anointing day, right? Ye Israel Alekoch, the princes or the heads, the Aleka, the, the leak, the Aleka, Alekaoch, Alekoch of Israel, the princes of Israel, Le Mekedeshao. Now that that's that Mekedesha, Mekedes, Mek. Mekedes yete kedese the ked the de and the se is the root the Ethiopic Hebraic root for holy and we've been speaking on holy consecrated and seeking to demonstrate that when you look into the Hebrew and moreover into the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic of Kedamawi Haile Selassie's Amharic Bible you find this right here and that's at the very at the very root but the core idea. Though it can be translated, consecrated, sanctified, um, uh, consecrated, sanctified, they use a lot of different, hallowed, they use these different words. The, the, the primary idea that's often lost is set aside, set apart, set aside. And that's very important when we're speaking about being holy, keeping something holy, and recognizing what is the key operative. What is the key operative? Not speculative. It's speculative when you say some of these other words. I am consecrated. What does that mean? You know, it's, it's, it's speculative. If you really don't understand, it means to be set apart, set aside. That is more operative. So when it says, um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So, so remember a mental ascent, the Sabbath day, this particular time period from even to even, from Friday even to so-called Saturday even, to keep it set apart from what you do during the other so-called six days, or for some five days, you know what I'm saying, but six days of the quote, so-called week or strong, as we would say, as Rastafari. But let's go to the root of this for a moment. Because what we found in our, doing our research and preparation, there's a middle word. The middle word is found twice in Isra, twice in Isra. And the middle word is Hanukkah without the, without the hay at the end, but the tri-literal uh, or the tri-continental root, one, two, three, the K-H, the N, and the K sound, Hanukkah. And they say it's Aramaic, Aramawi, and it corresponds to the 2598, consecration, dedication. And it is, it's in um, Isra, Isra. Before, we're gonna, before we go to the New Testament, let's first um, cipher, make a cipher of the O. And let's go to Isra. Let's quickly go to Isra right here. Um, Isra uh, chapter 6, Isra. Here we go. Isra chapter 6, verse, I think, 16 and 17. So Isra chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. Now we're going to come a little bit closer to, to modern, where modern Judaism, you understand, um, kind of gets off. Like, where do they get off? Okay, well, it's right here in Isra. As we get to Isra chapter chapter 6, verses 16 and verse 17. Now, the word that we find here is the, is the H2597, and they say it corresponds to the H2598, this particular one right here. Now, when we go there, we find that it says a subscription in, in the in the Schofield Reference Bible, the Restoration Temple is finished and dedicated. So there was a Restoration Temple 
that was finished and it was dedicated or livicated. And it says, from verse 15, it says, And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. Verse 16, And the children of Israel, the Bani Yishorayel, the priests, the, the, the um, Kohanim and the Levites, the Lewawian and the rest of the children of the captivity and the rest of those who were in, 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 in captive in Babylon. Like we are also, and I've come through this whole slave trade, white supremacy, new Negro, and all this other kind of first black president, rah, 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 right? And it says they kept the dedication. They kept the dedication of this house of God with joy and offered at the dedication of this house an hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Right? Now, when we look this up on Marinya, when we look this up in the Metaf Kedus of His Majesty, and let's just bring this verse up right here where it says, um, this is Metafe Izra, according to Metafe Izra, Mi'ra fa sidis kut ra asra sidis. It says, Yisrael lim lejoch kainatina le wawiyana yek arutima mara konyoch. Yazihin ye Israel lim beta kidase bedesita daragu. Bedesita daragu min. Kidase. Kidase. The kidase. So I think over here probably a good place to put it. The ke, the da, and the se. The ke, da, and this has this sort of se, like say, 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 say. You can write S A Y, but we write S E Y right there. Or you can put S E I to get the A sound, the say, the A, say. So this is the kidase. So the kidase, like the mekeda shao, you understand, is at the root of the Hanukkah. Is at the root of Hanukkah. But there's one other word we need to check out. There's one other root. There's three roots here that we're looking at. And let's put this other root right here. The H uh, twenty five and ninety seven, because some might accuse us of not being complete on this. We're gonna put all these roots here for the Hanukkah, you know. So for a moment, forget what you have uh, hearsay. The hearsay you may have heard say, and let's find out what the root of the etymology of this word is. Now we're gonna get to the primitive root. This is the root H twenty five ninety six, and here. It says Hanak or Hanak or Honak, Honak or Hanak. And it's a primitive root properly to narrow compared to, it says 2614, compare. So let's keep that in mind. 2614 says figuratively. Now get this. And this is, this, is, this is a revelation even to I, though we have studied this, but we didn't go directly to the Strong's Concordance root to just disqualify the Masoretic. We understand the Kedese, holy set apart from the, that Ethiopic portion of it, but the Hebraic part, which is a certain practice and tried or tradition, we had to now look at the root part. And when you look this up for yourself, 2596, it says figuratively it means to initiate or disciple. This means to initiate a disciple, and this is what many of the brothers and sisters have been requesting and give thanks to the brothers and sisters who fill out the application, who have sent it forward, the application, most of those applications we received, all of them that we have received, have been noted, but we're seeking to also reach forward to ones and ones and, and labor, co-labor together. But one of the reasons why we put this forward is because many have seen the channel and tune into the channel, and this is one way of um, feeding many, in a sense, with limited resources. So um, this is a word to those brothers and sisters. Continue to, to remember to keep the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath day, and to keep it set apart, and Torah studies, and pray, and really learn and do. You understand? But mainly to learn. 
all right, and, and keep in tune. Stay in touch, brothers and sisters. But this is interesting because Hanukkah here, as I said, from the age 25, right, the age 25, 98, initiation. So we have dedication. It's an initiation. Consecration is an initiation. Initiate. Initiate means, like, get started. And this is the first, this is actually, this, the Hanukkah is the beginning, one can say, of the Judaic cycle of holy or special Shabbat or special days, including the, the Moedim of Yahweh Eloheinu. Dedicate, it says, train up. That's what it means, dedicate and train up. Now, this is interesting that in the Amharic now, because remember, a lot of this comes from the Aramawiyah, you know, in the Aramawi, you know, and, and we're going to get into that, the Aramaic. The Aramaic is related to the Ethiopic root, but the Ethiopic represents more of the pure Shemitic, the Afro-Shemitic, while the Ar 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 Aramaic represents, um, remember, it represents captivity. It's like there are things that can be learned from that experience, but that purity was lost. So Isra is an important figure because Isra is the one who squared the Hebrew, the roundness, when he contacted the king of Ethiopia and the Ethiopian community because by that time the Hebrews had lost many of the ancient scriptures, the Torah and other of the books, the Ketubim. They had the prophets, the Nabim. But the Ethiopian Hebrews, they had the older books of the scriptures from Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's time, and from that day to Israel, a remnant of the kingdom of David that was planted in Ethiopia. So Israel had wrote and communicated, you understand, to the king of Ethiopia and to that Ethiopian um, Hebraic Judaic community. That's when the, the Hebraic or the so-called black Jews, in other words, ruled Ethiopia. And he requested, you understand, some of the ancient scrolls. And in exchange, that Ethiopian community, the Hebrew community in Ethiopia, they had needed the prophetical works because they heard that the Lord had sent his Holy Spirit and great prophets had spoke to them while they were in um, exile and while they were in foreign lands, like in Babylon, so forth and so on. So in exchange, Isra and Nehemiah, well, mainly Isra is the main one. He sent the, you know, those scrolls, and the Ethiopian Hebrews, they sent the scrolls they had. But the Encyclopedia of Judaism will bear witness that Isra, I know this is a little bit, but it's connected with the whole theme of Hanukkah. Because Hanukkah does connect with Isra and Nehemiah, those particular two books and the return, that remnant that had returned from exile and had rebuilt Jerusalem's wall and had rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem um, after the time of the captivity. So Isra, he disputed when he read the Ethiopic, because remember, Isra was a very holy man, yes. But he, how can, how can we say, he was away from the pure root for so long that the pure Ethiopic root had seemed strange to him since they had already developed a way of transmitting a tradition. But they did not have all of those. Remember when Christ said that there, there is there's other sheep I have to gather? And when we have the Ethiopian eunuch even coming from Ethiopia during a high holy day in the New Testament, it begs the question of, well, what is he doing coming for Passover, Pesach, unless he was a Hebrew, and then he was reading the prophet Isaiah, Yeshayahu. So that should be very clear, but that's the part that a lot of nominal so-called Christians and others, they gloss over, because that would demonstrate that half of the story still has not been told. So anyway, it was Isra who we, um, and even the European Jews credit with, um, squaring the Ethiopic round characters and presenting what we have as what's known as the Masora, because Masora means tradition. Remember when Christ said you have a certain tradition? And it's good, but there's some things that you're missing. There's a half of the story you're not getting. 
and they persecuted him for that, but yet recognized that where did he get this great learning from? You see, that's the Ethiopic part of the story that hasn't been told to ones and ones, and we can prove that as well. You understand that Yeshua and even this in Gamarium visited Ethiopia, and there's a whole remnant in Ethiopia. There's an Ethiopian connection to the scriptures. You know, and that includes us as well, and especially us in the diaspora. That's why this truth, even in this day and time, is being revealed through this particular root or the branch that the Almighty is regrafting in through the redemption of the King of Kings and his Christ. So that's just a little story on a little background. And we have more proof. People say, well, that might be a good story, but where's the proof? We got a lot of this very interesting proof, and even the Encyclopedia Judaica, if you read it, if you really understand how they're saying it, they're saying that somehow Ezra was disputing with certain texts he had. But it doesn't say the text was Hebrew text, at least not in the Ezrian way of perceiving it. So he disputed with these texts, and then it, they credit him with squaring it because in Babylon, the cuneiform is a square type. This is why when we look at a lot of the Amharic and the Ethiopic and the Hebrew and even some of the names of the, the Torah portion readings and feeding, even in the Amharic, we can see the resonance. But then when we go to the Gutters and the Octatech, which are the eight books, not the Pentateuch, it's the five books, but we as Ethiopian, we have the Octatech, and that's coming forward as well because a very a crucial part of our study. So all of this is now better. Now we can see what this is as a feast of illumination. This is a feast of illumination. We say Rastafari, keeping or, or observing, and we as Ethiopian Hebrews, Hanukkah, we have to understand, first of all, what the word means. Now we understand what is this related to. This is for the house of God, which is the temple. Remember Christ had a lot of disputes with the Jews, quote, end quote, about the temple. Christ says, and if you tear this temple down, in three days I'll build it up. And they were like, what, for 40-something years? I mean, how are you, who are you? You're not even such and such and blah, 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 ha, 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 ha. They, they waved them off. Like they wave I and I off when we say I and I is, is the beta is Israel. We are that people. His majesty is he. You understand? And they, and they said, no, it, it can't, it just can't be because they have their own um, misinterpretation. And what connects with their own misinterpretation is also a whole heap of ungodly racism. And we know this based on the fruit. We have 400 plus years worth of evidence. So we don't really need to go over that again at this time. In judgment, yes, but right now we need to be initiated, study, and learn the other half of the story that hasn't been told to us until this present time. So. That being said, let us go to John chapter 9. I want to just cover all the, all the Old Testament, the, all the main Old Testament references, as well as a good and a complete, a complete um, etymology of grounding out the root of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is dealing with initiation, initiating in the sense of uh, disciple and discipline. That's what it means in the sense of dedication, quote, end quote. But I and I say li livication because we know that if somebody is to be caduced, that he is not the God of the dead, but he is the God of the living. But since many of them who got caught up in the mistranslations of this, and this is how this word like dedicate creeps in, Livicate makes more even English sense, if you think about it. You understand? We are livicated to him. You, you know, it says um, um, to present yourself as a living sacrifice, not as a dead sacrifice. And this is, in, in, in essence, what separates we, you understand, who are the once lost but now found beta Israel from those who call themselves Jews. In the essence of the the spirituality, let us put it, that, put it that way, as well as the fruit, the fruit thereof. Um, so the word train up is also found in this. And I point the word train up because as we went into a little deeper study of the word, 
you know, where it says train up a child in the way that he should go. In the Masoretic Torah portions and the Masoretic uh, Proverbs, it used the same um, Hanak, Hanuk root. It used the same Hanuk, Hanak root. And now they have uh, an, another word right here, but um, that's not directly referential. The 2614 is interesting, you know, um, which is not Hanak, but it's Hanak, Hanak. So that basically means to be narrow, the same idea of being narrow, but by implication, is not disciple, but by implication, it means to throttle or reflexively to choke oneself to death by a rope. Think about that for a moment. To hang self or to strangle. So we have Hanak, Hanak, soft K, and Hanak, Hanak. Or some of them would say, the Arabs and some of the Jews, they probably would say Hanak, 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 Hanak. Some of them, it sounds like for a kind of a G sound. You, you, you over, but be that as it, be that as it may, that seems to be where um, another kind of initiation comes in, where they strangle and choke you. That's being initiated into the into those who say they are but are not. But the synagogue of Satan is not about initiation and discipleship. It's about choking you. It's a dedication. You understand? It's not a livication. So you always have a root now. From this root, it's like choose you this day. You know what I'm saying? Choose you this day. So we choose the truth and and the God and the Father of the truth. So Kedus and Kedase, the Kedase is a central part of it. So when we get to uh, John chapter 9, which is part of the, the Maftir and the Torah portion reading and feeding for, for all eight days, is from the Torah, Numbers, chapter 7, and for the Burt Chadash, or the New Testament, for all eight days, a portion from, um, where they actually have the same portion in uh, the New Testament, John chapter 9, 1 to 7, and John chapter 10, verse 22 to 39. So let's go through this with the time that we have, all right? Um, here in the New Testament, it says, uh, the man that was born blind is healed. And as Yeshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples and his dekamazamorit uh, asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Who is the one that did the chatiyat, the missing of the mark? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Yehoshua, Yesus, he answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of Elohim Baruchu, should be made manifest in him. It's not him or his parents, but so that the work of Ha Elohim, the true God, Hashem, should be manifest, should be manifest, right? In him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh. You see the connection? The night, and symbolic, that's the ignorance. The light is the day, the illumination, while the night is the darkness, like the dark ages, the ignorance comes. When no man can work. So in times of illumination, when we are truly initiated, we begin to truly do job work through the work of the King of Kings, start to fellowship, start to be productive in the way of his magic. When the night comes, when the ignorance comes, no man can work. No man is able because there's no illumination. There's no enlightenment. Verse 5, as long as I am in the world, it, I am the light of the world. This is interesting what Christ is saying. Christ is saying, as long as I am in the world. Now, when you read later on, he say, I'm leaving the world. You understand? By leave my, I impart my spirit to you. You understand? I am with you in spirit and in truth. But I am leaving the world. And he says, you all are the light. You remember how Christ initiated the disciples where he says, and ye are 
the light of the world and therefore shine. Don't put, don't put it on the bushel. Don't hide it, but cause it to shine forward. So you see that connection. So why Christ says that we will do those things he has done and we should do greater, greater things. That's what he has taught to his true disciples, not nominal Christians and churchings and counterfeits, not, not them, not the lawless who say, Lord, Lord, but don't do the things he says. Verse 6, it says, and when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Verse 7. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. Now, 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 let's over a while. This is, this is deep right here. So what's the Torah portion? We're in the ninth Torah portion, right? And the ninth Torah portion is known as what? Vayishlach, according to the Ashkenazis or the Sephardics, will say Vayish, uh, um, um, Vayishlach, well, from the eighth, the eighth, which was last Sabbath. This one is Vayished, Vayished, and, and um, Tekemet. But the eighth, the eighth sabbatical is Vayishlach. And Vayishlach, in our update, and this is, this is one of the areas that we had to update and in the updated um, uh, weekly Torah portion, when we the spirit said, look, the spirit gave us illumination, and that's the that's the place one of the one of the places we had to augment, amend, and correct. And instead of Azazacho, it was actually Lake, which means sent. Now here that we're in the Hanukkah in this initiation, because it's the beginning of the Torah portion readings and or, or the beginning of the holy days, you understand? And it's the eighth or ninth out from the beginning, the Simchat Torah. Here we find that the Moshiach or the Messiah, he sent the man whom he had, whom he had uh, uh, um, um, anointed, you could say, with the, the clay, he anointed, notice what he did. He anointed not with oil, overstand the, the link, clay, oil, man made from clay, you know, and overstand the link right there, that normally people were anoint with oil, right? But then we find out that we are to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. But now he's using clay now to anoint the eyes of the man who was born blind, and he sent him saying, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation, sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. This is part of the portion from the Burt Hadasha for us, according to our, our um, uh, Hebraic Judaic year, the portion, the readings and feedings for the holy days, um, and the calendar, as well as you'll find it on page, uh, hey, we're asking page 9 of the Sabbath house readings or the weekly Sabbath reading. We get to the Hanukkah for day 1 as well as straight through to day 8. These are the main readings, 1 to 7 of chapter 9 and 22 to 39 of chapter 10. So let's go one chapter forward, and then we will give a summary on this. When we get to uh, chapter 10, we begin with 22. Now, here's what's interesting here, too, that when you find in the New Testament, you'll find in the New Testament um, chapter 22, of um, or chapter actually 10 verse 22 of St. John in the New Testament this is a section where Yeshua asserts his deity he asserts his divinity he asserts his divinity here um, verse 22 says and it was at Jerusalem it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication Remember, that's the whole idea of Hanukkah is dedication. We overstand as Rastafari is a livication. But let's just understand them in this term, and then we'll get to the overstanding. So they call it the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. What time is it? What time of the year is it right now? Is it summer? No, it's, it's basically, it should be winter. It's not, you know, the weather is, the weather is interesting, to say the least, um, right now. And um, it's wintertime. This is the time, winter. This is what, uh, 
This is December twentieth. Uh, December twentieth. It's winter time. We just want to pull up the yeah Johannes Wengel chapter ten and get the get verse twenty two, where it says be Jerusalem ye mekdes metades the all hone. It was the feast. Of the renewing, the renewing of the Mekdes. Now, the Mekdes is the holy place. The Mekdes. Now, remember, keep in mind temple. And I hope you, I hope, I hope you, brothers and sisters, I hope you're writing notes of this. Keep in mind temple. Now, why that's gonna just, just write it. Keep it in mind, but write it down in your, in your study book, in your debtor, because it's important that. Temple, because as we're going to go through this, and you're going to see the link between the old temple, that physical example, that, that, that macro kind of hieroglyphic representation of the real physical temple, and then through the overstanding, you'll see how Jesus Christos, how he brought that temple now, you understand how he showed that that temple was, was, was man. You understand? And, and now he is that template for us and for our temple. You understand? And it says, don't ye know? Ye are the temple of the living God. So therefore, um, um, be, ye, be ye separate. That idea of set apart. Be ye educed. You understand? And be ye that holy that, that ground, that root for the holy place for so the disciple, the deck of Mesmor, each of us who, who answers affirmatively and spiritually to that discipleship core and recognize what his majesty says, that discipline of the mind is a basic ingredient of genuine morality and therefore spiritual strength. And he says, in order for one to follow this aim, one must be guided by the hymenot or the living faith you understand, which often is translated as religion. Now, we know at the core is spirituality, but the religion, like the certain discipline, this is a certain time. This time is that's a, that's a basic training. It's like a basic boot camp, a basic training process that one can intuit it spiritually, and then you recognize on the spiritual level it's a way of life. While you can look at the spiritual man and you can develop a religion off of the spiritual man. But in truth, the spiritual man is in tune with the true God and the source of life. This is why we can see these reflections, you understand, in different, among the mystics of different um, religious so called traditions or different, but they are mystic brothers and kinsmen. They are of the same fraternity. And this is why His Majesty even spoke that way concerning. Um, the brotherhood. So moving forward, now that we understand that now the dedication, the feast of dedication in the New Testament sense doesn't have the idea so much of, um, I mean, mekdes is there, but it's your mekdes metades. Metades comes from the root of adese or hadese, which means to renew, to repair, in the sense of new or making new is to renew, or in the sense of repairing, the renewing or the repairing of the holy place. So in the cipher of Torah portion reading and feeding, in our lunisola, our Judeo-Hebrew year, our Ethiopian Hebrew tribe, this time even is a time of a renewal. It's a time for a renewal. One can say, well, it's a solstice or whatnot like that. Well, as above, so below. It's still a time of renewal if you are in tune, if you are in alignment. If not, then you're not in tune, you're not in alignment. But verse 23 says, And Yeshua walked in the temple in Solomon's port. So now he's in Solomon's portico. Corinth Nebre, Yesu Simbe, Mekdes, Be Salomona, Deja, Meme, Lalesha. Then it says, And then came the Jews, the Ihu, round about him and said to him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? Now all the people came around him and said, Okay, 
um, the Jews, the, the, the religious authorities, and at this time there was the black Hebrew Jewish or Israelitish presence among those Jews. I'm not going to say that all of them were, were black, black, you understand, but the black Jews or Hebrews would have been over and obvious in the time of Yeshua. There's no doubt about it. You understand, even the Roman, the Roman historian, I think Tacitus bears witness to that, the Jews of the race of the Ethiopians. That means there's a black presence, the Ethiopian eunuch, and there's, there's other direct, you understand, and um, circumstantial even evidence, but there's a lot of direct evidence. But they're asking him now, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, in other words, are you Moshiach? Are you Moshiach or not Moshiach? Are you Moshiach? Tell us, if thou be the Moshiach, tell us plainly. Just tell us. I'm the Moshiach. Tell us simply. You know, if, are you Moshiach? But here it has, if you be the Christ. But in that time, remember, Christ, we have found the Messiah, which has interpreted the Christ. So they're interpreting for the audience that would read it later on in the popular Koine Greek. But during that time, they would have asked, are you Moshiach? Are you Moshiach? Tell us plainly. Tell us this simply. Are you Moshiach or not Moshiach? Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua. Are you Moshiach or not Moshiach? Tell us. Tell us plainly. Simply. Now, verse 25, Yesus. Now, it's interesting. This is associated with the Hanukkah. That this first part is associated with the whole idea and theme of Hanukkah. When we understand it from the strong Hebrew, the Masoretic, and then when we get the overstanding from the King of Kings and the Met of Kedus. From the Met of Kedus, the root idea of Hanukkah is holy. You understand? Is, 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 is consecrating and making something holy. You understand? And part of that holy consecration is the Kedase. And the holy place in the New Testament now we find is renewed. You understand? It's being renewed. Um, as in this verse here, Mekdes Metades.